be on a Sunday morning, then you're especially welcome. If this is where you always are on Sunday morning, well, you would have to say something else than the site you're getting off. Welcome to those who watch us uh, later on online, and it's just great to have you here. What a beautiful morning. I keep saying this to people, but I've got the best commute in the world driving along the east to the through the East Newton on a Sunday morning, it's fantastic. Um, boring bits, can I remind the elders, we have a church session meeting this morning after the service, so please don't run away. At the beginning of each month, uh, I take a few moments to remind everyone to collect the East Newton food bank, and I know people have been putting things in the boxes this morning already. I do appreciate that the cost of living is affecting everyone and it's getting harder and harder for many of you to continue to be able to do things like that. I suppose all I can say is, if you're finding it hard, imagine what it must be like for those who are already struggling even before the current cost of living crisis. So, do what you can. If you can't, don't panic. It's not not trying to make you feel guilty in any way at all, but if you are able to spare something, then please add whatever you can to the uh, box in the vestibule at the bottom of the steps. Tea and coffee after the service, for those of you who are not in the cup session meeting, and um, we'll get our own tea and coffee as well, but uh, 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 the rest of you, please do come together and socialise, catch up with each other, find out what you've all been doing over the last few weeks. So let us come together in our call to worship and you have the responses on the appointment service. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, you his faithful people, praise his holy name, for he is the of our soul made at the moment, he is favour of our soul. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. God turns weeping into dancing and holds us with joy. May our hearts sing God's praises and not be silent. We will praise God today and forever. Amen. So let us begin our worship, praising God, singing hymn 184. Sing to the Lord a joyful song. 184.
Let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Be exalted to you, Lord God, the God who made all things in creation and called them good. The God who has woven heaven and earth together, who taught the sun to rise and the stars to dance. Mighty in power and work, strong is your love and tender is your touch. The heart of the earth is cradled in your hand. Each grain of sand is known to you. The whole world is drenched in your Holy Spirit. Every atom of this universe is seen and cherished. How can it be then that this very God, this highest host of heaven, knows and loves each of us? How can it be then that this very God has made it so that we might draw close in worship and adoration? Here, now, in this very place. Draw close even when we have wandered far. Draw close even when our hearts are heavy. When we struggle to believe you care that you are even there at all. Hear us, Lord, and be merciful to us. Lord, be our help. We thank you, Lord, who lifts us from the heaven and from the depths, who saves us and heals us who restores and reshapes us, and who equips us to restore and reshape all of creation. Sing the praises of the Lord, your faithful people. Praise his holy name. And now, Lord, we join our voices together with your people across the world in the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Stand and call on the name of the Lord his God. 
wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not the Barna and Tarpa, the rivers of Damascus, better than any of the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash him then and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Naming servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then, when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Amen. Let us sing again from the hymn book number 125. Lord, all being thrown afar, one too far. Your peace will rest on them. 
If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and you are not welcome, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town will wipe off from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. But whoever rejects me, rejects him who sent me. The seventy-two returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Amen. Thank you, Alan. Let us sing again in the hymn book, hymn number 158, God Moves in a Mysterious Way, 158. Dear God, we hear of peace only as a dream, 
a dream we would love to be part of, a dream we long to have in our hearts, in our neighbourhoods, in our countries and even in our churches. We pray that we may experience that peace that passes all understanding. We pray, O oh God, that we may experience you, the peace of the world. Penetrate the grieving heart, accompany the lonely one, remember the forgotten, reclaim the strayed, make music out of this harmony of conflict and chaos. Let our restless hearts rest in you, O oh God. This we pray in the name of Christ, who beckons us into the vision of peace. Amen. <laughs> and continuing that theme on, let us sing the, the poem from St. Francis, uh, 528, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace, 528. <laughs> regardless of the consequences of those around him. Naaman is told he can be cured of the skin disease he is afflicted with. So he does what any commander would do. He marches into Israel with all his supporters around him, looking for the solution to his problem. But he's scaring the living daylights of everyone who comes in his way. 
not least the king of Israel. Because the king of Israel thinks this is a trap. This is just a ruse in order to prompt an invasion. But if you heard thoughts like that before? <laughs> Elisha the prophet, who we started here about last week, sends a communication to Naaman saying, Come and speak to me. I'm the one who can solve your problem. When Naaman arrives, Elisha stays indoors. He refuses to cross the threshold to speak to him. He sends out his servant and says, Go wash yourself in the river Jordan seven times. That's what my master tells you to do. Well, you can imagine what the Naaman thinks of that. This man who says he can cure me won't even open the door and come and speak to me. He sends a servant out instead. As I was listening to Alan reading that out there, that once he's gone off in a cream puff, he came to mind. That's it. He went off in a rage. You can imagine this man all puffed up with his armour on and everything else. The leader, the big man, and he's told to go wash the river down the road. It's not the sort of thing he expects. And he's got, of course, not just his own pride, but he's probably got hundreds of his followers, his men behind him, looking at the leader going, what are you going to do now? You know, we're going to burn the house down, are we going to, are we going to, are we going to basically wipe this, this place out? They're all ready. Now, Naaman might have been expecting to have had some sort of difficult task, take a potion, do something to change this illness. He was not expecting to be told to go and wash. But at this point in the story, some wise servant plucks up the courage to tap him on the shoulder and have a quiet word in his ear. Now, those of you familiar with modern management techniques know that this is managing the manager. This is the sort of thing we now talk about, saying, you know, we as followers also need to support our leader. One of the great philosophers from the 19th century, his name escapes me, called it speaking the truth to power. And this is a servant who obviously knows his master well enough to be able to say, really, has he asked you to do something difficult? No. Go and do as he asks and see what happens. If you don't like the result, come his house down then. It was probably the next part of it, the, the bit we didn't hear. <laughs> what have you got to lose? Naaman is cured. The solution to his problem was simple. And it only involved swallowing his pride and accepting that the help that was on the offer to him was simple. He didn't need to do something difficult. But Naaman's only learned half the lesson. Because like all great leaders who's now seen the light, what does he want to do? He tries to give generously to those who have cured him. To show his gratitude with money, with clothes, with all sorts of honours. Elisha refuses. Once again the powerful struggles to understand that not everyone or everything can be bought. God's blessing is priceless and God's servants cannot be bought with human wealth. Jesus shows us a different way to meet people and situations. In the same out of the 72, Jesus empowers his followers. We're not told anything about how he prepared them for this task, we have no idea. But we are used to thinking of the 12 disciples around Jesus, this inner group, the core group as it were. But what this particular story demonstrates to us is there was a far wider group of people who were regularly in contact with Jesus, probably walking with him on his journeys. It must be quite a, a sight to behold. 
100 plus people walking through the countryside. Not an invading army this time. Instead, followers of God, praising God's name. In empowering them, to go, empowering them to go out to preach in his name, Jesus demonstrated his complete confidence in them, his willingness to be a leader who trusted his followers, and who celebrated with them upon their return from their mission. Here is a leader who guides, who taught, who supported, and rather than dominating or threatening or humiliating or bullying them, Last Tuesday, I had the great privilege of attending some of the graduation ceremonies at Dundee University, celebrating the graduation of our students, the ones who had missed out over the last two years, so from 2020 and 2021. They couldn't, they could graduate, but they couldn't have the ceremonies. And the first thing was how surprising it was so many of them had returned to actually go through graduation. They have the certificates already, they probably have jobs and other things that they were looking for from graduation. I was overwhelmed by their energy, their optimism, their positivity for their futures. And the reason I mention this is because many of these young people, and one or two who are not so young, are the leaders of the future in whatever walk of life they choose to go into. We say that likely at university, you are the future, you are the leaders, the people, the decision makers. But actually it's true. These are the people who go off to build new companies, new industries, to work in established areas, to be the ones who will lead and manage and be the future of so many different organisations. And it's great to look out from the stage and see so many of them choosing to come back to do that. And I found myself asking the same question, what kind of leader will each of these people be? Will they be leaders who walk alongside their people, wherever that might be, just like Jesus? Or will they try to be the kind of leader who's aloof, power-driven, self-centered, focused only on what they can get, rather than what they can give. It won't surprise you to know I'm hopeful that they will be more like Jesus and less like Naaman. Leaders, good leaders, need to be supported. They need people around them who are willing to speak truth to power when it's required. The story of Naaman demonstrated the importance of someone in Naaman's entourage, willing to take the great man to one side and remind him of the reality of his situation. Power can sometimes be so overwhelming that the leader forgets themselves and begins to believe that they can control everything. Tertullian, a 2nd century Christian theologian, reports that the Roman emperors were reminded that even in moments of triumph, they were only a man. It was said, and I don't know the truth of it, but I've heard it many times, that as they were taking triumphal uh, processions, they'd have a servant whispering in their ear, remember you are only a man. Remember you are only a man. Look behind you. Remember, you are only a man. Jesus never required that kind of reminder. He knew who he was, and he used his power for the benefit of all, not for his own gain. Remember the temptations in the desert. He was offered all earthly power. He refused. His earthly life was a demonstration how to handle power, how to lead, and how to empower others. We need to learn from his example in all our dealings with those around us. When we are asked to lead, we must remember who it is we serve and what it is we are called to do. We must empower others 
to also be leaders and not simply use our position for our own aggrandizement, our own glory. There is no glory in praising yourself when you are there to bring the people to the glory of God. As leaders in God's church, we must always be looking to bring others forward, to develop their skills and their leadership. We should be looking beyond our own ambitions for those that God has and how we can build on the legacy of those who have come before us. Jesus offered an example of selfless leadership. We should strive to do the same. Amen. And may God add his blessing to these words. Let us sing again from the hymn book, hymn 509. Jesus calls us over the tumult. 509.
for all who are lonely and sad in the midst of others' joy. May they know God as their friend and comforter. We give thanks for the tireless carers, except they are not tireless, anything but, and yet they have kept going at great cost to themselves, saving lives. God who cares, thank you for all carers, strengthen them in their innermost being. We bow our hearts and heads with sadness for the many loved ones who have died from or because of COVID-19. Tears fall with the memories of absence, of too many final moments spent apart. God of all comfort, bring peace. <coughs> and now, Lord, in the silence of our hearts, we bring before you all those we know of in need of your care, compassion, comfort, and love. Remember, O oh Lord, the aged and the infant, those who feel that their life work is done, all who are passing through the valley of shadows, that they might find that Christ, the risen from the dead, is with them, and that there is light at even time. We ask all these things through the same Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us sing again a closing hymn from the hymn book, hymn 363. We have a gospel to proclaim. 363.
use the responses on the altar of service. Go and serve the Lord, you faithful people. Serve His holy name. For His anger lasts only a moment, but His favour lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. God comes weeping into dancing and clothes us with joy. May our hearts sing God's praises and not be silent. We will serve God today and tomorrow. 